why do you think one CPI print that shows that inflation is cooling is not enough for the Fed? Well, that's the thing. The Fed's looking for a meaningful decline in CPI. And until they see that, they can't pivot. They're going to continue to push that terminal rate up to the 5% target. But I think the market was right to celebrate last week's print because, you know, at a, at a cursory level, 7.7% inflation is still really, really high. But it's a far better print than the 9.1% that we saw in June, SEMA. And if you look under the hood a little bit, and that's what we're talking about this week, it's all about macro picture and inflationary pricing pressures. But if, if we look at used car sales and we look at housing prices, these have come down meaningfully. It means that this aggressive Fed tightening is working with those two areas. And housing operates on a big time lag with CPI. So strategists, economists, Fed watchers, everyone's hoping that the trend within CPI will continue as these housing pressures fall into uh, CPI December, January, and February. So we'll see what happens, but I think there's reasons to be um, a, a little bit excited, maybe not excited, but, but a little bit um, enthusiastic. Cautiously enthusiastic. And you see, as you it. say, the Fed uh, <clears throat> wants to see this trend sort of play out. How many months, what type of confirmation does the Fed want to see in the CPI numbers? Is it two months of, of cooling inflation or more? Well, I think it's going to be a little bit longer than that for them to even consider a true pivot. But all of us who watch it can can read into every bit of data. And it's not just CPI. You mentioned PPI today, the Empire Manufacturing today. Any sign that prices are coming down in those two reports is going to be received very favorably. We also have consumer uh, retail earnings this week. So we can kind of see what the holiday season looks like. And, and any hints that they can give us about fourth quarter, first quarter for next year will be pretty powerful as well. So when we're thinking about positioning portfolios into the end of the year, I think using this rally as a, as a means of just right sizing your positions, making sure that you're not overextended, too risky. We're not out of the woods by any mm -hmm. means, but I can make a strong case while we're in a bottoming process and why things can get better. And here's what's interesting. Your top pick from what I see here is Devon Energy. Energy is by far <clears> the best performing <throat> sector so far this year. Kevin, why do you think this is a name investors should still own right now? Yeah, well, it's easy to pick a winner, right, after yeah. you see a great year in 2022. But I think energy will continue to be the play. We're heading into winter. These companies have really right, looked at their balance sheet in terms of how they're spending, and they've put the shareholder front and center. The dividends that they're paying are, are fantastic. They're distributing variable dividends from their mm -hmm. free cash flow. They've, make, they've made acquisitions. They're committed to share buybacks. And I think energy for the foreseeable future continues to be a really important part of a portfolio. You just want to look at multiples. You want to make yeah. sure that your fundamentals make sense and you, you got to keep an eye on risk.